Hi, hello everyone. Welcome to this session on Spring on Azure. Uh, so let me introduce myself. I'm Julien Dubois. Uh, most people know me as the Gypsy guy. So I'm the creator and still lead developer of the Gypsy open source project, which is very popular. We've got 15,000 of, of GitHub stars now. Uh, pretty big project. A lot of people are using it. Uh, it works, of course, very well on Azure. Uh, aside from that, I'm a Java champion. I'm a book author on Spring. A conference speaker, obviously. I'm also an organizer. I organize the Gipster Conf in France. And at work, I'm a cloud developer advocate at Microsoft. And I work on Azure, of course. Um, what we are going to do uh, during this session uh, is how to better use Spring on Azure. So I've been working at Spring Source. I wrote a book on Spring. I've done tons of Spring. Currently, I'm working with Azure. And I'm going to make them well, work together the best possible way, according to me, of course. We will speak about development tools and production services. Just a little show of hands so I know you better. So who uses Spring Boot? Yeah, like everybody. <laughs> it's incredible. Uh, and who uses Azure? OK, it's like, I would say, I don't know, one third of the room. So uh, of course, if you don't use Azure, you will learn a lot of things. If you already use it, hopefully you will well, learn from the way I do it, hopefully. Uh, of course, uh, this is an opinionated list of tools and services. Those are the ones I like, how I work. Uh, but Azure is huge, Spring Boot is huge, and you may, of course, use them totally differently. So let's talk about development. development. Uh, I'm a developer, so that's usually the part I love. Uh, a few tools which are not totally linked to, to Spring Boot and Azure at first sight, but which in fact are uh, Visual Studio Code. So it's free, it's open source, it's done by Microsoft. It's got Grid Java and Spring Boot support. Uh, for example, here uh, I have a little Spring Boot dashboard that's done by Microsoft. So there are extensions which are done by Microsoft or by our friends from Red Hat for Java or by Pivotal for Spring, of course. Uh, by the way, both Red Hat and Pivotal are partners with Microsoft. So of course, we all work together to give you the best experience possible on Visual Studio Code. Uh, big announcement this week. Uh, there's an online version. If we have time, I will demo that to you. It's basically the same Visual Studio Code you use on your laptop, but it runs in the cloud. So it's more powerful. Uh, maybe you've got better network. And of course, you can change the laptop and still have the same environment running. So it's really nice. It works surprisingly well. Uh, well, hopefully we'll see that a little bit later. Another very important tool if you're using Spring Boot, at least from my point of view, because on Jipster we do a lot of Docker. We imply that you have Docker installed and that you know how to use it when you use Spring Boot. Uh, Windows system for Linux is quite incredible. The version 2 is very fast. In fact, you've got a Linux kernel running in parallel to your Windows kernel. So it works really well with Docker Desktop, which means that on Windows, you can have a wonderful Docker experience like on Linux, which is incredible. And I love this uh, screenshot because now you can install Ubuntu from the Windows Store, which is like, totally crazy. If uh, people had told me that a few years ago, uh, I would not have believed it. Uh, but well, things are evolving for the better. Uh, more direct. Uh, tooling for, for Spring developers, of course, Spring Boot starters. Uh, something that I believe few people know, because when I talk to people, they usually are surprised by that. Uh, so on Azure, we've worked for three years. We've got a full team. We, we, we have worked for three years with Pivotal to provide Spring Boot starters for, I would say, the most important uh, uh, Azure services. Uh, so those are the Spring Boot starters you are used to, to, to work with. Uh, you just you know you add them to your POM, and then you add a few configuration keys in your application.yaml files, and uh, those will work out of the box. Currently, uh, so there's a great documentation website, but personally I prefer to read the code, so I, I put the link to the to the source code directly. Uh, the most important ones are support for Active Directory, you know, for security, storage for storing blobs, images, a Key Vault, it's for security keys, so you can store your your keys there securely. Cosmos DB, which is a, a, a NoSQL distributed database. It's compatible with MongoDB, with Cassandra. Uh, Service Bus, which is an event bus, so if you want to send messages between your apps. And the last one is 
probably the most important for me. As your insight, so it's for monitoring your apps. Uh, I say it's more important because, for example, I love Cosmos DB, but you might not use it in your, all your apps. Monitoring is different. You should use it everywhere. I mean, if you don't monitor your apps, it's a bit strange. So all of those are provided so jointly with Pivotal and Microsoft. So if we take, for example, uh, Azure Insight, uh, you've got a starter, a Spring Boot starter. You just add it to your POM. You've got a configuration key to add, and you're all done. It's working out of the box. Uh, and so that's a really great tooling if you are using Spring Boot on Azure and want to use some specific Azure services. This is built on top of the Azure SDK. So this is like the lower level things that we provide on Azure. Uh, we've got a new SDK v3 which is going out and which is awesome for Spring developers. Uh, and we're lucky about that. Uh, so that new SDK is uh, following some guidelines which were written by Jonathan Gills, who is a fellow Java champion working at, at Microsoft. Uh, and the great thing about it is that it uses Spring Reactor. So if you are using Spring Reflux, it's the same API behind the scenes. So it's very easy to use uh, this new API with Spring Reflux. I'm going to give, just afterwards, a little example of that. Um, the main directory, if you want to look at the source code, is listed here. It's not the only directory, because it's currently be being developed. Uh, and currently, it only supports the storage, key vault, and Cosmos DB. But those are the most obvious ones. I mean, if you want to store images, or if you want to query Cosmos DB, you're happy to do that in a reactive, asynchronous way. So that's the most obvious services to, to, to add. So of course, it's started by the best ones. Just a little show of the code. So this is a normal Spring Reflux REST endpoint. And as we can see here, it's giving you so a flux of let's say, objects. Um, so this is what Spring Reflux like. And if we have a look at how I got this data, uh, so this is some um, Cosmos DB query. So it looks like a SQL query. There are different API with Cosmos DB, I use the SQL one here. And this, is, this gives me a result set, and I'm mapping it to business objects. What's important to see here is that Cosmos DB is giving me a flux of objects. I'm transforming it, I'm mapping it into some other objects, and I'm giving them back. So basically, I've got a flux from the beginning to the end. It's very easy, the same API all the time. So as a Spring Boot developer, it's very easy for me to write reactive uh, services uh, with the Azure SDK and Spring Webflux, so that's really nice. Uh, the Spring Boot starters I just showed before, they are built on top of that, and they will help you auto-configure all that. This is, of course, under development for the latest versions. Um, I've talked about development. I'm going to talk also about production, but between development and production, you've got continuous integration. Uh, there are tons of options on, uh, on Azure to do continuous integration. Uh, I would say the two most obvious ones are Azure DevOps and GitHub Actions. So Azure DevOps is, uh, I would say, like the, the classical official uh, DevOps platform from Azure. It's very powerful. On Gipster, it's the one that we use because they give us 10 free nodes. That's for every open source project. We, we are not specifically privileged. Uh, but having 10 nodes, which are quite powerful, is really good for us. And the configuration can be really, really advanced. So for I would say complex stuff, I would recommend it, and that's what we do uh, on Jepster, so that's what I use every day. So hopefully, well, uh, obviously, I, I like it. Uh, but the new uh, system which is available now is GitHub Actions. Uh, the cool thing about GitHub Actions is, as the name suggests, it's integrated inside GitHub. So that's the one I will use today, just because it's a lot easier, because I'm going to use GitHub, and so it's already working with it without doing anything. Uh, I gave a, uh, a little example of a YAML file. It's a configuration for GitHub Actions. It's basically the one we will use now. Well, in the demo, I will do later. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's just a YAML file describing what we do. So basically, we check out the source code, set up the GDK, run the test. That's what takes mo most, most of the time. Uh, build it, and then we're going to do some other stuff afterwards. That's what we'll talk later. Basically, I'm logging in, and I'm pushing my code to Azure, and Azure is going to run it. Uh, as we can see here, this code is triggered by a push. So as soon as somebody does git push, well, my code is going to be tested, built, and run without me doing anything, 
And as a developer, that's my goal. I don't want to know anything about, uh, I don't know, Kubernetes, Docker, or anything. I just want to do Git push and have something that runs a test, builds, sends it to the cloud, runs it, scales, scale it for me, maintain it for me, and uh, I don't even know. For example, here, I don't even know the JDK that is being used. So on, on Azure, we use uh, the Zulu JDK from Azure Systems. Uh, it's a supported JDK, which is quite important now, nowadays. Uh, while here, the JDK, I just say JDK 11, it's being maintained for me by Azure, and I'm very happy about that because I don't want to know about the latest uh, critical vulnerability in the JDK. I want the cloud to take care of that for me. Uh, so let's talk about production. So we've got many options to run Spring Boot apps on Azure. The most obvious ones is to use a, GVA, uh, a virtual machine. So you just, well, you buy a VM and you run your code on it. Uh, it's pretty basic, but it works really well. Uh, on Gipster, I, I maintain uh, something called start.gipster.tech, which I will use a little bit later. Well, that runs in a VM because I've got some specific stuff to do and I'm happy with it. Uh, of course, that means I have to maintain everything, so I have to maintain the OS, the GDK, and everything, so it's more work. Uh, if I want to scale it, well, uh, it's up to me to do whatever I, I can to scale it. Uh, so it's not perfect, but it's a good option if you want to. Of course, we've got better options on Azure. Well, it's a choice. Um, for simple uh, Spring Boot applications, you can use Azure Functions. Uh, so. I know many people might not know about those, so I'm just going to explain two uh, products here. The Spring Cloud Function, which is a project by Pivotal, by the people doing Spring Boot, and that give you Spring Boot features, uh, you know, like auto configuration, like the starters, the Spring Boot starters, which we just show. And this is going to work for functions. And on Azure, we've got uh, an offer which is called Azure Functions. Some other cloud vendor might call, call it Lambdas. Uh, so it's event-driven, it's serverless, and it's going to run your function. And of course, Spring Cloud Function has got an adapter for Azure Functions. Yes, there is one which has an S and not the other one. <laughs> um, and that's very cost-efficient because uh, you're only going to pay per, per, per run, and you've got a very big free tier. So basically, this is very cheap. Uh, the only issue you might encounter is uh, the, what people call cold start. Uh, in order for this to be efficient, uh, if your, um, uh, your functions are not being used for a certain amount of time, so there is no official amount of time, but unofficially it's 20 minutes, uh, while your function will go back to sleep and we will wake it up when somebody else calls it. Uh, if you have this issue, there are several ways to, to, to remove it. You can buy a premium version, uh, a more powerful engine. Uh, but if you stay with the basic, uh, you know, like uh, free tier, uh, and that's the one I, I'm focusing on, uh, have a look at my uh, sample code here, which I just updated uh, well, this week, uh, because I'm using the latest Spring Boot 2.2 release and the latest version of Azure Functions. And my latest test shows that for a call start, you need four seconds to start the function and four seconds to start Spring Boot. So it's eight seconds in total, which is not that bad. Once again, with the free tier, you know, like the, the most basic stuff, so worst case scenario. Uh, so that's really good if you have some simple needs. Uh, a little example of a Spring Cloud function from the code from the directory I just uh, uh, showed before. Uh, as you can see, this is a normal Spring Boot application. And this is going to run a function. So here I'm just doing, a, you know, you, you give me a user and I say, oh, welcome user. So it's very simple, hello world. But it shows how it works. You can see it's a real Spring Boot app. So anything could work from Spring Boot, of course. If you want to add, I don't know, GPA or anything, it will work. Or one of the other Spring Boot starters, everything will work. Uh, so that's great because you have access to the whole Spring Boot ecosystem, which is very big. If functions are not enough for you, uh, we've got something called Azure App Services. So those are managed images, um, uh, VMs for you. So basically, you give a jar file to, to Azure App Services. It's going to run it for you. It's nothing specific for Spring Boot. It's just running a jar file. Uh, but we manage for you the operating system and the GVM. So the GVM will still be Azure, which will be supported. The operating system will be Windows but you don't really care about it, it's managed for you, and you could trust Microsoft to run Windows correctly, hopefully, <laughs> otherwise nobody could. 
what's great about it is that it's auto-scalable. It's a, honestly, it's a bit basic for what you can do with Spring, because with Spring Boot, you can do better than that. This is something which is generic, but it's already quite good to have auto-scalability. Since this week, we got lots of announcements this week, because it was Microsoft Ignite, our big conference this week. Uh, so since this week, we've got free SSL certificates, which is good. So if you have some Spring monolithic application, you can run it on Azure App Service for uh, a limited amount of effort. Because, so there's nothing specific for Spring Boot, but then Spring Boot is very easy to run, uh, as, it's, as it's just an executable jar file. So uh, it's perfect for monoliths and simple application. I wrote a blog post explaining everything to run it. Uh, so if you, well, I will, of course, uh, give the slides afterwards on Twitter. If you want to read the blog post, of course, you're welcome. Uh, now let's imagine you want to do something more complex. I'm going up the stack, of course. Um, we've got Azure Kubernetes services. So Kubernetes today is all the rage for running your microservices and your applications. Uh, Azure has got its own Kubernetes service, which is managed by Brendan Burns, who is the co-founder of Kubernetes. So we've got a, a big dedicated team on this. Uh, it has a few, well, several very important features compared to something you would install yourself on a, on a VM. First of all, it's fully managed. So we do the upgrades for you. So, and that's important for Kubernetes. Uh, it's, it has got elastic provisioning, so we can add nodes automatically without you doing anything. We've got on security. For example, it's connected to Active Directory. We can scan your images. Well, we do a lot of things for security. And so it's like the previous slide with app services. Uh, if you want to run your Spring Boot monolithic applications on it, it's quite simple because uh, typically if you use Jipster, we provide you with a Docker file. So you just build your Docker file send it to Kubernetes, and basically it's going to work without much work, without much work on your side. So it's also a good option. And then I've got my last and biggest option now, which is called Azure Spring Cloud. So it's a specific service for running Spring Boot on Azure. Uh, and as it's the title of this presentation, of course, that's like my, my main subject. Uh, it's publicly available since this week. So we're lucky because now we can try it directly. Uh, it's a platform as a service uh, for Spring. So you, you are going to give your Spring Boot application to it, and we are going to run it for you. Uh, it's a joint work by Pivotal, so the makers of Spring Boot, and Microsoft, the makers of Azure. So it's uh, fully supported from end to end by both companies. Uh, the goal for Azure Spring Cloud is microservices. You can run monoliths on them, of course, but it's more interesting for a microservice because of a certain number of managed services. Uh, if you are doing microservices, you're going to need a service discovery mechanism. We didn't talk about that in the previous options because, well, you have to run it yourself. You're going to need a configuration server. Uh, maybe you will want to do some blue-green deployment because you know, you're not going to upgrade everything at the same time. So it's a lot more complex to run microservices than to run monoliths. And for this, we've got a, a, a fully managed environment for you where you don't have anything to do. If I take, for example, the service discovery, you've got a clustered uh, Eureka server, a secured one with SSL, and everything is done for you. You don't have access to it. Well, you access it to get your services, of course, but you can't update it or anything. We manage all this for you. It is supported by both companies. Uh, if you want to test it, so I just put the link, and uh, well, it's publicly available, so anybody can test it. Uh, and if you want to learn more about it, uh, well, I just put a link to my training. So I did a full 12-chapter training on Azure Spring Cloud. It takes, I would say, maybe one day to do everything. But if you do the full training, then you know everything about it, uh, at least as much as I do, because I put everything I could inside it. And let me do a little demo of everything I've, well, not everything I've talked about, but most of the things I've talked about. Um, we have 30 minutes left, so it's perfect to do a demo of both Spring Boot and, and Azure, you know, well, something quite, quite complete. Uh, I'm going to use so my own tool. I'm going to use Jipster to generate an app. Uh, so Jipster, we've got this nifty uh, online application to generate uh, your, well, your Spring Boot uh, applications. So I'm going to generate it on my own uh, GitHub instance. I'm going to call it DevOx. So it's going to be a public repository, so you can even access it, access it while I'm doing the, the demo. Um, so 
Azure Spring Cloud is mostly uh, made for microservices. Here I'm going to do a monolith for a very good reason, is that monoliths have got a front end, and so to show you what we are going to do, it's better to have a front end than to do like curl request all the time. So just because it's easier for me. And I'm going to do a real app. Uh, so for example, I'm, I will use a MySQL database in production. Uh, I will, so I can use a cache or not. Uh, so that, those are the current production options on Gypsum. We will have many more very soon. Uh, the issue when you do microservices and you scale them is that if you have a local cache, you're going to have cache synchronization issues. So with Gypsum, we've got options for that, like Azelcast, or you can just put no cache, and so your apps will scale, but of course your database will be hit harder. Uh, I will just use this one for convenience today, but I do not recommend that in production. Uh, I'm going to keep everything else by default, except internationalization to keep things simpler. And I'm going to generate that application on GitHub. So here I'm going to have a, a normal Spring Boot application with MySQL, uh, GPA, uh, and um, an Angular front end. And we're going to see how I can deploy it to Azure Spring Cloud. We're going to see if that's easy or not. And we're going to update it and scale it and well, just have fun with it. So my directory is here. Let me just clone it. And we're going to open this up to have a look at what was generated with Visual Studio Code, which was the first thing I showed. Uh, if it takes some time to deploy afterwards, we'll use the online version. So this is a Spring Boot app based on Maven. And if I have just a quick look at the, the Java code, well, you can see here that it's a, I would say, usual Spring Boot application with some configuration, typically, for, um, for um, uh, uh, GPS support or for security. Uh, this is some code I'm going to deploy to Azure Spring Cloud. So I've got a couple of configuration things to do. So the first one I'm going to do on GitHub, uh, I'm going to deploy with GitHub Actions. So I want to give it a secret so it it has a, a specific key to deploy my app to Azure Spring Cloud. That's basically, I think, the only thing I'm going to do now. Uh, sorry, my, co my, my key is here. And I'm just going this so nobody sees my key. I know it's recorded. I'm just hiding my key. <laughs> OK. So this is normal, this is for security. This is so GitHub Actions knows how to deploy, well, has the right permissions to deploy to Azure Spring Cloud. Uh, so Azure is a normal Spring Boot app. And um, what I would like to show you on Azure Spring Cloud, well, first of all, let's go to see Azure Spring Cloud. Uh, so my cluster is here. So this is using the Azure portal. You can do it graphically, which I'm going to do quickly now. You can script everything. And as, a, as I'm a developer, I'd rather script everything because it's easier. I don't like clicking everywhere. So I'm using the graphical interface to show you, but then I will script everything because it's quicker. Uh, so my cluster is here. There are a number of, of menu items. We're going to go through the main ones. The first one I'm going to go through is a configuration server. Um, as those are, going, those are Spring Boot microservices, they are going to be configured using a Spring, Boot, uh, Spring Cloud configuration server. This one is hosted, managed, secured for you by Azure. So you basically all have this screen. And it's pointing to this Git repository where my configuration will be, well, is. Uh, it can, of course, be secured. Here I've got a public one, so you can check what I'm doing. But of course, you can secure it with a token or with SSH, of course you probably don't want your configuration files to be public, normally. And my configuration file is here. It just says hello, so I'm configured by the Spring Cloud config server. So if we can get that message, well, that means that we, we are conf correctly configured. Um, and to get that message, uh, let me just use um, my application properties file. So the message will arrive here. So I'm just private string. It's called message and generate the getters and setters. Okay, so 
We will have a look at that just afterwards and we'll see if we get the message here correctly. Uh, second thing we're going to do is, well, deploy. And let's have a look at the running application. For this, I'm going to use Jipster again. Uh, um, no, yeah. Uh, I'm going to use the development version of Jipster. Uh, so we've got a Spring Cloud support in the master branch. It's going to be released in a few days. Uh, so it's a, the first time I show it on, uh, live, of course. But uh, well, it will be available very, very soon. So if you use Jipster, you need to do this little hack so that I'm pointing to the development version. And uh, now that I've done that, uh, I can um, well run Jipster as a Spring Cloud. This is going to generate some stuff, and we are going to have a look with Git at what was generated. And we'll see that it's pretty simple and pretty common. Um, this command is using the Azure command line. So it's going to scan uh, my Azure uh, uh, resource group and cluster. So it's going to know a lot of things, so it's easier to use that than code it manually. But you can do the same thing manually, of course. Um, so first thing it's going to do is ask me my resource group and then my cluster name. That is going to fetch them automatically. So I'm just going to press Enter. And then it's going to ask me the name of my app. Well, DevOps is cool, so I'm going to keep it. Uh, and then I've got two options. Either I build my code and deploy it locally, which is great. Either I use GitHub Actions, which is better, especially with conference Wi-Fi, because I'd rather have uh, the, the network from GitHub Action download everything than my laptop here. Uh, this is going to first create the app. So let's have a look here. If we go to my other Spring Cloud dashboard. I've already got some apps running, and so we've got so DevOps 2019, which is arriving. So that's the one which is being created behind the scenes. Um, we can already have a look at this. Oh, sorry. Just let's spend a little more time here. I've already got some microservices. I've got a gateway, so that's something which is public on the internet. And all of them are connected through the Spring Cloud config server and the, uh, the, the Spring Cloud discovery server. So they all work together uh, as a cluster. And that would be nice if the network was going well. Well, we'll wait for it to arrive. And we'll go and see the rest. Oh, it's not created yet. Hmm. Oh, OK, it's arriving. So uh, this is my app. It's not already pushed. And we are just creating, for example, for the moment, uh, an empty shell. And then we will push some data in it. Uh, as you remember, we give a key for GitHub Action to push to it, so that's, 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 that's like nothing to do. What's interesting here is that you can scale your app, so we will do that at the end, but we also have service binding. What we mean by service binding is that, you remember I said my app was going to use MySQL, and MySQL currently, oh, let's have a look at what Jibster generated for me. Uh, oh, come on. Prod. So this is my Spring Boot configuration generated by Jipster. And so we've got a default MySQL um, configuration here, which is, of course, not good for production, so I'm going to remove it. If I wasn't using Azure, I would need to put my configuration here. With Azure Spring Cloud, well, I can still do it, of course, but I've got a better option. Here, I've got something which is going to configure that automatically for me. I'm just telling it I want MySQL. It's going to scan my MySQL databases. I've also already one uh, which I created just before, which is called DevOx. It's an empty database. There's nothing in it. Really, there's no trick. It's just because it takes a few minutes to generate, but it's very easy. Uh, I have to log in. I'm not telling you my password, of course. And it's not DevOx. <laughs> uh, doing this means that Azure Spring Cloud is managing my database connection for me. So if we just click here, we can see it's just giving me the correct parameters that I just deleted before, but those are the production ones. So it's probably better to let Azure manage that for, for me than cut it and push it to GitHub where everybody can see my password, which is not a very good idea. Uh, so my app has probably been generated. Oh, and so here we are going to generate a few files. I'm going to say yes to everything, and then we will look at what was modified. 
Um, um, so, it generated some files and pushed everything to GitHub. Let's have a look at my GitHub repository. Oops, clicking too quickly. Uh, so this is my latest commit, the one I just did. And let's have a look at what was done. And we'll see how hard it is to, let's say, modify a Spring Boot app in order to push it to, uh, to other Spring Cloud. So first thing that was generated by Jipster is my uh, um, GitHub action. So that's basically what we said before. So it's going to uh, test the app, build it, uh, use uh, Azure Credential and then push it to the cloud. So that's, I would say, normal. Uh, it's already running. We're going to have a look at it just afterwards. Uh, and then the, it created some, let's say, empty scaffolding file, but the only important thing is here, in my pom.xml, it generated, so that's what Jipster does. You can do it differently, but honestly, I find it's a very good way to, 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 to work. Uh, I have created a specific profile, a Maven profile, which is called Azure. And in that profile, I have added a few dependencies. Uh, so there are three types of dependencies here. So the first one is let's say, a specific Gypsy thing. It's you can either use Tomcat or Undertow, and I'd rather use Undertow, but that's not very important. Then this one is an important one. Uh, that's the only thing you need to add to your POM file to work on Azure Spring Cloud. Uh, it's a very small jar file. Uh, I hope that at some point we can remove it. But what it does primarily, it gets your SSL certificate to connect to the Spring Cloud config server and the Spring Cloud discovery server. Uh, you know, everything is secure, so you need certificates at some point. That's the way you add your certificates, which, is a, yeah, which has to be done. And then we have here three Spring Boot starters, those are not specific to Azure. Those are very usual Spring Boot starters. There is one for the configuration server, one for the discovery server, or and one for Zipkin. I forgot to tell you about that. Zipkin is for doing distributed tracing and, and monitor your app in production. It's very useful for microservices. If you do microservices, normal monitoring will not be enough. You, we need to have distributed tracing to understand you know, what, you know, the network ops that are what, what your end users are doing. Uh, all of those are the standard Spring Boot ones. You just add them to your POM. I mean, if you don't add them, for example, you will not have service discovery. That's, it's as simple as that. If you add them, well, you will have service discovery and other things working automatically. So it's really, really easy. And that's all there is to do to host your apps on Azure Spring Cloud. Uh, there is basically no vendor locking. You, you, you could run the same apps yourself anywhere. But here, what's good is that you've got a great managed service. Uh, you've got security, you've got support on everything. Uh, let's have a look at my GitHub action because that's the thing we pushed. So it's going to take about five minutes, mostly because uh, it needs two minutes to do the test. And testing is important, so I'm not skipping the test. Uh, so that's the GitHub action I just uh, explained before. So it, it, uh, it set up the GDK, tested everything, now building everything, and then it will deploy everything. And hopefully, if everything works correctly, my app will appear here. It will be configured using the config server, and it will be discoverable using uh, the discovery server. You can see here it's working. Uh, let's just have a look at the app. Um, one of the nice things that Azure Spring Cloud provides is a great way to test your app and do blue-green deployment. So you can have like two deployments at the same time, you know, one staging one, one production one, and then you can ship them. And you can also test them using an API key which is available here. So uh, when you do microservices, those are both, I would say, complex issues if you do those manually, but it's all done for you. Uh, in order to make things easier, I'm going to give it a, a, a domain, so it's going to be exposed to the internet, so I can show you more easily how everything works. And it's a bit slow. <laughs> uh, well, while it's, oh, it's here. Yeah. So it's probably not deployed yet, so we will have, uh, yeah, it's just a page telling you, oh, my, my, my app is going to, uh, to arrive here. We're going to refresh this page once everything is deployed. Uh, while it's deploying, as we've got time, let's continue working on our, on our application. 
Uh, let's have a look at what Gypster provides here. Uh, probably the most well-known feature of Gypster, well, the one that everybody talks about, is our entity generation, which is done with uh, our own domain language. Oh, sorry, let me first show you how it's like. Um, so, on Gypster, we've got entities, which are basically, so it's a database table. On top of it, you've got some GPA, some Spring MVC REST code, and on top of that, you've got some Angular code to display everything. Uh, we are generating also unit testing, integration testing, everything for you. Uh, and those are done using, well, this language. So I can add, I don't know, a DevOx uh, string. And as you can see, automatically it's updated here in my category, entity. Those entities have got relationships between them. I'm going to save that. And I'm going to ask Gipster to add all that code to my application. And you remember with GitHub Actions, as soon as you do git push, everything works. Well, I'm probably going to have all this in production very easily. We'll see. Oh, so it's a new app. I've got to refresh it. Uh, did it deploy? Not yet. Mm -hmm. mm. Let me have a look. Oh, I should have a look at GitHub Action. GitHub Action has finished. So that's good. And on my app, it's currently being deployed. Hopefully everything works. Oh, we can have a look at the database. Uh, so the database was empty. And it's not empty anymore, so that's good. So that means that it's nearly finished. Let's have a look. Mm -hmm. What's taking it so long? The database is done. There's nothing to do. Hmm. I'll go on with my entities and we'll see that just in a few. Oh, sorry, it's already there. And as you can see, it's already monitored. Everything is already working. Come on. Ah, it's arriving. Don't know why it took so long. Usually it's like Im immediately. It's not that bad. It just took a couple of minutes. But uh. So I've got my Gypsum app working. Admin, admin. I'm in production. Um, I've got no entities yet. That's what I'm going to do. And oh, yeah, sorry. Let's do the entities now because that takes some time. Uh, so, my app is called Devox 2019. Yeah, I've got lots of apps. I need to apply that. So, this is going to generate all my code, put it into a pull request. And, uh, well, I'm going to merge that pull request. And as soon as I merge it, it's a git push. Everything will be built and deployed automatically. So, I'm not going to code anything. Uh, let's have a look at the pull request. Uh, it's here. So it's pretty big because I've got lots of entities, lots of, of relationships. And I'm going to merge this. So as soon as I merge this, GitHub Action is kicking in. And it's going to build, test, and deploy everything. You see, it's already running here. So last time it took eight minutes. We'll wait maybe 10 minutes. We've got 12 minutes. It should be good for the end. <laughs> Uh, oh, by the way, this also updates the database. We use a tool called Liquibase to update the database, so everything will just work. Uh, so let's just have a look at my app during that time. Uh, we said we had two important managed services with Azure Spring Cloud. The first one was the configuration server and a configuration key. Let's have a look at my configuration keys here. If I look for message, uh, it's not this one. It's not, ah, it's this one. Remember, I had configured by Spring Cloud config server. That's the thing I had in my, uh, in my config server here. So it took that message from here. So I know everything works. Uh, and the config service is configured here. So everything works. By the way, I already knew it because with Jipster, we force uh, this configuration to work. If it doesn't connect to the config server, it's going to fail and it's not going to deploy. So I was pretty confident about that one. Uh, the second service, we need to check if Eureka is Eureka working? If I go to the L screen of Jipster, we can see here we've got Eureka, and it shows the other services from Eureka. So everything works well. So it's also connected to the Spring Cloud Discovery Server. 
Uh, oh, and do we remember the database? Well, we already saw that uh, the database was populated, so we know it's working. But we can also have a look at the database here, and we see it's MySQL and it's working. So I've got all my service running without me doing much. Do you remember I added one jar file? Uh, I had one simple GitHub action to deploy everything, and I have everything in production. Uh, and now, as soon as I do, oh, did I merge my pull request? Yes, oh yes, I did it, yeah. So now all I need to do is do git push, and it's going to be automatically deployed to the cloud. Uh, let's have a look at where it is. I should have removed the test, because tests take time. <laughs> I know it's not good for a demo to say test. I'm not good, but yeah, sometimes if you want to go to production faster, you should remove the test. Um, well, let's give it like five minutes because we've got time. It's going to deploy, update the database, and uh, we will have some new screens arriving. So you, you remember, we created several entities. At the moment, we've got nothing. They will appear with the database table and all the code, and everything will work. Uh, let's have a look. At, at the Spring Cloud, behind the scenes. Uh, we had a look uh, at the applications, at the config server. Uh, I talked a little bit about deployment. Uh, so you can do blue-green deployment. So while you are deploying one app, you can have a hidden one to, to test and then switch them. Uh, it's not exactly what I'm doing here, but here, you, as you can see, I am deploying one, and I've got the older one running. So I have no downtime. So that's really important. That's really good. Um, one very important part of Azure Spring Cloud is the monitoring part. Of course, you've got access to all your logs. Otherwise, honestly, it would be quite useless. Uh, but we do better than just giving you access to logs. You've got access to metrics. So you've got the full metrics from the GVM, from the OS, and from Micrometer, from, from Spring Boot. I'm going to just give you the memory used. As you can see, we're using like 300 megabytes, which is normal for a rather big Spring Boot app. Uh, and so this is already quite, I, I would say, better than most uh, 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 cloud providers that you can see because it's dedicated to Spring Boot. Uh, but the killer feature for me is this thing. It's the distributed tracing part. Um, oh, let me give it some data because I didn't use it for the last hour, of course. So you're going to, to see tons of different stuff because I did some testing. Uh, but as soon as you add the Zipkin dependency to your app, it's going to be automatically monitored. And uh, Azure Spring Cloud will give you like this a nice map of all your microservices and your, the links between them. And if there is something wrong with it, you can drill down and have a look at the code. I have no idea what this is, but we can have a look. Maybe there was a failure at some point. And you can understand better what happened to your app. So it's really powerful when you're doing microservices, so you can understand the flow of data, what went wrong, what is slow, and react accordingly. Uh, maybe scale your app, which is, by the way, the next thing we're going to do. Um, I still test running, seriously? Ooh. Mm -hmm. It's like my screen is locked. Come on. Yeah, it's going to deploy, so we still need a couple of minutes. Uh, let's just me show you what we're going to do afterwards, because so we've seen service discovery, service binding, uh, configuration, uh, logging and tracing. The last thing we need to talk about is scalability. So that's the last thing I will do on Azure Spring Cloud. Uh, so Azure Spring Cloud is still a very, very new service because it was released this week. Uh, in the future, like most other services, it will support auto-scaling. And that's what should be the most important feature of it at the end. At the moment, you scale it manually, so you can just give it like more CPU and more instances. I'm going to scale to 20 <laughs> just to have fun. Um, of course, this is manual at the moment. You, you can probably script that, because as you go to the metrics, you can use the metrics, do alerting, and using alerts, you can scale stuff. Uh, but in the near future, the idea, of course, is we have auto-scalability. And this is how you should make money with Azure Spring Cloud. And so the final idea is that you give us your code, 
we manage it for you, we run it for you, but most importantly, we scale it for you. Uh, and as we are working with Pivotal, so Pivotal should know pretty well how to scale up and down Spring Boot, I mean, it's their tool. We should know quite well how to scale up and down Azure. Oh, by the way, behind the scenes, this is Azure Kubernetes service, so it's Kubernetes, in fact. You don't say it, but it's the Kubernetes we talked about before. Uh, and of course, Azure Kubernetes service scales up and down quite well as I just explained before. Uh, and so, if we are good at auto-scalability, well, your app should only use you know, the, the number of resources, the number of CPU and RAM of instances that are just needed at a certain point in time, and will be billed, uh, I think it's by the hour or by the second. I think it's by the second, I'm not sure. Uh, and so you will just be billed for the right amount of, of, of resources that you are using for a very specific amount of time. And that's how, of course, you succeed with your customers because you, you can, uh, uh, while well, your app can still run even when you've got a big peak of, of users, but that's, that's also how you limit your budget because you are only paying for what you use. That's the most important part for you, probably. Uh, let's have a look at our app. Oh, that's a glitch. In a <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's deployed. Let's have a look. I'm refreshing this. Come on, killing it, starting it. Yeah. So I've got my entities which have arrived. So that, that created uh, so database tables, and I can I know, create something new here and say hello, uh, everyone. And oh, that's the database field just required. Uh, yeah, uh, Gypsum generates the front end, the back end, and the database tables with required fields and everything, so that's awesome. Uh, we could have a look in the database and see that it has been updated. And if I go to the category, well, hopefully you can see the text I just typed in. Yeah, it's here. Hello, everyone. So that's awesome. That works. Uh, now, the good thing about other Spring Cloud is that we should be able to scale everything. I'm going to save it. Uh, I gave it two CPU and 20 instances. I did that on purpose. You can imagine my cluster behind the scenes does not have 40 CPU. So I'm forcing it, in fact, behind the scenes, I'm forcing Kubernetes service to scale to more machines, more nodes. I have no idea how many nodes there are. I'm not doing anything. It's just uh, as a sprinkler managing that for me, behind the scenes, Kubernetes managing that for me, and it's all done automatically for me. And that's awesome because if I had to do that manually, it would be really complex. Um, if we go to the app instance here, we can see them being provisioned. Some of them will arrive faster because they are on the same node than the one that is already running. Some will take a bit longer because it's going to provision more, more nodes. Uh, and, uh, and graphically, I will have a hard time to show you. Oh, no, I, I, I have a way to show that to you. If we look at the metrics, so that's the GVM metrics uh, from, from Gipster, and you've got, for example, the HTTP metrics. So if I go to another node, I will not have the same metrics. Uh, it will be a way of showing you that we have several nodes running. Because otherwise, in fact, it's quite hard to, to show this working because it's all magical, basically. Uh, so those are my 20 instances. Uh, I just clicked on it, so at the moment, it's, it's working. Uh, we've got two minutes left. Hopefully, in two minutes, we can have a few of them running. And so I can do my test. Uh, otherwise, I will, uh, I, don't know, I will post a screenshot on, on Twitter <laughs> to prove that it works, but I guess it's the first time you've got a 20 node cluster running at DevOps, so that's cool. Uh, do any of you have any question about all this while it's running? No. It's all too easy. <laughs> uh, no, no, to be honest, so with Gipster, uh, with my sub-generator for generating the, uh, the, the Azure Spring Cloud configuration, it's a lot easier. That's why I'm using it. I'm not taking much, much risk. If you want to do it manually, uh, well, you can have a look at my Git commit, because everything I've done is public, so you can read through it. Honestly, it's not that hard. Uh, it's just, well, knowing how Spring Boot works and, and configuring it correctly, but I mean, it's a, spring, a specific Spring Boot service, so of course you need to know how Spring Boot works, otherwise <laughs> it just all doesn't make any sense anymore. Uh, and once again, 
it's a very new service, so if you want to test it, you're very welcome. We have a booth, by the way, Microsoft has got a booth uh, at DevOx. You are very welcome to come and see us. Uh, what is very, very important for us, well, for me and for some of my colleagues, is that we have um, uh, 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 some queries for you. Uh, you know, for the next releases of Azure Spring Cloud, we still have questions. Uh, for example, here I have I am working with my own gateway, so it works with Zool, it works with Spring Cloud Gateway, it could work with other gateways. So one of the questions we have is, what you, I mean, users or customers, what would be best for you and what would you like us to do in order to be I mean, the, the, the best uh, possible for your service? Uh, so you are very welcome to come and, and answer a few questions, and, uh, and we give you in exchange some, we've got some nice shirts and some nice socks. The socks are better. So come, come to see me to have the socks. And hopefully this is going to work. Yeah, we, we are just timed up. We said I was very, well, we can't say it worked. We, we, we saw the list. It was arriving. Mm. Uh, of course, I've got the demo effect at the very, very last second, which is not cool. Well, uh, Thank you, everyone, and well, talk to you at the booth. Oh, I will show you, show this at the booth. Come at the booth. It, it will have worked. I mean, the time for us to go downstairs. It it will be working. <laughs> so, thanks a lot. Goodbye.